Oh, hello. I'm Professor Compressor, coming to you from the COVID castle. What's COVID, you ask? Don't worry about it. Today, I'm here to talk about my three favorite compressors, the API 2500, the Universal Audio LA-2A, and the Universal Audio 1176. Join me, won't you? This is the API 2500, manufactured by Automated Processes Incorporated. API has been manufacturing quality American audio equipment for decades now. On this particular compressor, we will see some things we recognize, along with a few twists you weren't expecting. Let's begin, shall we? Oh, I almost forgot. We'll need something to listen to. How about that new dance track you've been working on? Yes, that's the one. It sounds awful. What's the problem? Well, you notice that the kick drum is nearly 20 decibels louder than the next closest instrument. You did that because you thought it slapped. It doesn't slap. It certainly doesn't slap. But what if we could reduce the signal of the kick drum without affecting the other instruments? It's too late, you cry. I've already mixed the song. Never fear. We'll send your two mix through the API 2500 and see what happens. So far, we don't notice a lot of difference. But that is because the threshold is all the way up. If no signal can go over the threshold, then the compressor is not going to trigger gain reduction. As I begin moving the threshold down, you will hear the kick drum going over the threshold, causing the compressor to turn that signal down. On the API, you pull the threshold down by moving it to the right. Now you'll notice we have reduced the volume of the kick drum, but it sounds terrible. There must be a way to retain some of the fundamental sub of the kick and still compress its amplitude. Let's begin by using our attack, release, and ratios. The first thing we can do is use a very fast attack and a very fast release as well. What about ratio? Well, we want to turn this kick drum down significantly. Let's move from compression, ranging on this compressor from one and a half to one, all the way up to six to one. We can go all the way to infinity to one. Our kick doesn't sound any better yet. But wait, you say, why is there a second release knob? This is our first clue that we're not dealing with any ordinary compressor. If I turn the release knob all the way to the right, I activate variable release time. Instead of six selectable release times, I now have a fully sweepable release going all the way to three seconds. You notice that with three seconds of release time, the compressor never leaves extreme gain reduction. The needles aren't even moving. But as I pull the release time back and get faster release times, you see the compressor start to breathe. Let's leave it here.
The center of the API 2500 has a very unusual set of controls in what are called tone and link. The first tone control might look familiar to you as a knee, although it does have a middle position between hard and soft. With program material like this, you may not notice much difference in the three knee positions. However, it is here in the thrust control where we will find perhaps our most useful feature for this application. Putting thrust to the normal position means all frequency content across the whole audible spectrum has the same effect on triggering the compressor. This is the way we anticipate most compressors work. API, however, has given us the ability to engage two alternatives. Maybe most useful for this particular song is the alternative called loud, which allows lower frequency to have less effect on compression. Listen and you will hear the sub frequencies return to the kick drum when I engage loud. Now it's starting to sound something like that kick with which we began, but we can hear the surrounding instrumentation as well. Just to remind us what this sounded like before, let's go to bypass. You should be ashamed of yourself. Much better. The kick has lost its initial transient that made it so identifiable in the song, but that's the price you pay for a bad mix. You will notice that API has both an in button, a bypass button, and a button labeled gain. It may seem counterintuitive to have both an in out button and bypass. Let me explain. The in control activates the compressor, and if the compressor is in and in bypass, like so, the signal still passes through the compressor's analog circuitry, providing that API signature thumbprint of a warm mid-forward type sound. If I take the compressor out, the signal is no longer going through the circuitry at all. Now by default, the API is applying a certain amount of automatic makeup gain to compensate for the volume reduction that occurs when the signal crosses the threshold. If you prefer, you can take control of gain reduction by engaging the gain button and then using your rotary knob to apply the amount of makeup that you choose. Well, now we're really getting somewhere. Once more, here is the signal in, and here we are in bypass. The amplitude of the kick drum hasn't changed, but just about everything else has. The final thing about the API that might seem a little different to you is this link control. A typical stereo compressor will have either two channels independently functioning or two channels linked so that if one enters gain reduction, they both do. API, on the other hand, has given us 
a variety of percentages of link. Currently, we're at 100% link. The two channels are functioning together. You can see the meters working identically. Watch what happens if I change my link control so that only one channel is triggering the threshold. You see now only the right channel triggers the threshold in the independent position. If I go to 50% link, the right channel is triggering the threshold, but the left channel is still engaging, only half as much. And I can go to 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100% link. The VU button determines what the meters show us. This is gain reduction, with the needle starting from the right and pulling back into negative numbers to explain how much signal is being reduced. On the other hand, we can view input level. You'll notice with input, only the kick drum moves the needle and it clips. With output, we should see that now those kick transients are way closer to the rest of our arrangement. If I dial up the makeup gain, we should see these needles move. Well, this has been my explanation of the API 2500. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson, and I'll see you when we talk about the LA-2A.